For thousands of years, nature has worked to create the most incredible world. It might be surprising to hear that humans have only explored 35% of this planet. The majority of what remains a mystery lies within our oceans. Our mission is to sail the world in search of the most untouched corners of land and sea in an attempt to find places where nature is still the dominant force. Which brings us to this journey, to a place that most have heard of but many have never been. Our route will take us around the bottom of Tasmania, tackling the stormy seas of the Roaring Forties and facing life or death emergencies to attempt to discover the abundance of wildlife this secluded island holds. This is no simple task, but we hope it'll serve as a reminder to preserve the natural world. The journey began in Sydney and with a few surprises along the way, a week later, we finally reached the sleepy town of Bishano, known for its spectacular scenery and fairy penguin colonies. This is the perfect jump off point to the rest of the island. So windy right now, it's uh, gusting around 40 knots, but it's been such an astonishing sail down from Bichna. With the wind forecast, we knew we only had two days to enjoy Wineglass Bay, renowned for its crystal clear waters and pearly white beaches. Freysenet National Park is a place where nature and adventure go hand in hand. This bay is considered one of the most spectacular hiking destinations in the world. Here, the trails are both challenging and rewarding. But getting to land here isn't the easiest. As there's only a beach, you have the option to drive the dinghy onto the sand or take a leap of faith onto the rocks. As you begin the hike, you're surrounded by lush greenery side by side with the ocean. long walk and I forgot my shoes so I had to work after. From the view at the summit, it's easy to understand how the bay got its name. The curved beach at the base forms the bowl of the glass, while the narrow strip of land forms the stem. Oh wow. The hike back is just as beautiful. When the sun starts setting and the gentle breeze carries the sweet scent of the surrounding eucalyptus trees. As we return to the beach, our friend Gus arrived to make up the final piece of the puzzle for our Tazzy team. This man is the perfect combination of chill and talented. And aside from his easygoing nature, his expansive knowledge of Tasmania makes him the perfect person to help discover as much as we can of Tasmania's wildlife in just one month. I think it might have mange. In fact, he literally wrote the book on it. Wine Glass Bay has been good to us. It's been so good. Cheers, Cheers to Wine Glass Bay! <laughs> Cheers! <laughs> Mm. <sighs> Only the finest wine, of course. Not, not the goon or the $14 bottle special. <laughs> not that. After an evening of laughter and welcoming our friend home, we set our alarms to pull anchor at sunrise. The morning was beautiful and calm with only a light breeze blowing. According to the wind predictions, by the afternoon, this breeze would soon grow to 30 knots, blowing out the whole bay. Which means, if we didn't leave early, we could get caught in some nasty weather. We began slowly making our way out to our next destination, when suddenly we were reminded that although sailing on the ocean can be a thrilling and exhilarating experience, it also comes with inherent dangers. The vast expanse of water can be unpredictable and unforgiving. It's important for sailors to be prepared and aware of the risks. 
neighbouring boat inside the anchorage belonged to two Tasmanian fishermen. The previous evening, they had decided to take their small dinghy out for an afternoon of fishing. As the day progressed into night and no fish caught, their luck only got worse. They went to go start their outboard engine and it gave up and they couldn't get it started again. Without paddles or communication equipment such as a radio, they were stranded. Their only option was to try head to the nearest piece of land, which happened to be a cluster of rocks. They huddled together under the freezing cold Tasmanian air, using their boots as pillows and just trying to stay warm. As we began our journey out the bay, they spotted us and chose to take a massive leap of faith by jumping back into their lifeless dinghy to try float towards us while doing everything they could to catch our attention. Neutral! The realization set in that had we not seen them, it was very unlikely that any other boat would have headed into this bay over the next couple of days, at least until the wind died down or changed direction, which could have been disastrous for our two new friends. Honestly, this frightening scenario could happen to anyone, and it just goes to show how important safety equipment can be. That must have been a rough tide on the water, or on rocks, I guess. That's where they slept. Every time the dinghy goes off, we make sure that people have the radio for this reason. It just kind of shows you, you got to be careful, because you can't rely on outboards. It's not like when your car breaks down, you're just on the side of the road, you pick your thumb out. Yeah, glad that we came by and we were able to get them. Mariah Island is a haven for nature lovers and wildlife photographers. Because of the size of our keel, the only anchorage we could fit into was Chinaman's Bay. It's protected from most winds with a deep hole to drop anchor in, but it's some way from shore and would require getting a little wet when we wanted to go to land. <laughs> As you walk through this bush, you'll be surrounded by the sounds of birds chirping and the rustling of leaves as the wombats move about. Nice to get out and stretch the legs. You really want to keep your eyes peeled and your camera ready, as you never know when a furry creature will appear. We've just seen our first wombat. I've never seen one before, but they're basically just really, really, really big balls of fluff. These adorable native Australian marsupials are easily spotted grazing on the large expanses of grasslands. It's important to keep in mind that wombats are wild animals, and visitors should not feed or touch them. Rather, observe them respectfully, take photos, and enjoy the experience. Mariah Island has a rich cultural history, with evidence of human habitation dating back over 8,000 years. The island was once home to the indigenous people of the Tasmanian region, known as the Palawa people. The Palawa people had a deep spiritual connection to the land and its resources. They lived in harmony with the natural environment, using the island as seasonal hunting and gathering grounds. The arrival of Europeans in the 18th century brought significant harm to the Palawa people's way of life. Many of them were killed by violence and disease. The indigenous culture and language of the Palawa people was almost completely destroyed by the colonization of Tasmania. Much of the knowledge and history of the Palawa people has been lost forever. Mariah Island isn't only a natural wonder. It's important to understand and respect the heritage of the native people who were the caretakers for this land for thousands of years.
During our route planning, Gus had made special mention of this area on the chart. He said it's an excellent place for spotting pelagic wildlife because the underwater shelf quickly drops off. We decided to make a detour on the way to our next anchorage to see if anything would happen as we passed through this area. And sure enough, the rumors held up their reputation. There is like some commotion over there. There's a huge pot of bottlenose dolphins just following us around. We are surrounded by like 100 dolphins, so many. They engulfed the surrounding waters of our boat, and suddenly it felt as though there was more dolphin than ocean. Oh, look at the size of this one. From above, you can only see a small percentage of the pod, as those are the ones surfacing for a breath. But with a camera below the waterline, we were able to reveal the truth. We were not surrounded by just any pod. This was a super pod, over 300 strong. Get on the mermaid line. You reckon? Yeah, there's so many everywhere. We couldn't resist the urge to jump in. As soon as we plopped into the water, the dolphins moved in closer, with their sleek bodies gliding effortlessly around us, as if welcoming us into their world, inviting us to join in their fun. The best way to swim with them is to take a big, deep breath, let go of all your worries, and dive down, immersing yourself in the magic of the ocean as the dolphins approach, singing their songs to you. If it weren't for the crippling cold and the approach of sunset, I don't think you would have been able to get any of us back on the boat. <laughs> Baby, by me, it was so crazy. We're just swimming with a massive pot of dolphins. Oh my god! It's the first time I've ever swum with dolphins. We saw them from quite far away. They came up to the boat. They were swimming with the boat for a while, and we thought, let's get in and go for a swim. One like looked me right in the eyes. It was awesome. It was awesome. We were in the water with them for so long, but um, we all just jumped in in our swimmers, so it was a little bit cold. I'm stoked. Woo! Woo! Tazzy! <laughs> The combination of limestone, time, and the ocean usually creates something very special. From the dinghy, we were amazed by the magnitude of the cliffs and the inlets to explore. Whoa! Oh my god! Oh man! Whoa. Look at this! What? Oh, oh, yes. oh my god! This is crazy! 
crazy. I've become quite the wuss with this dry suit. It's been a blessing and a curse. Without it, I'm just freezing all the time. Dry suit, it's kind of like wearing a big bubble. So you wear clothes underneath it. This is shark skin. I wear that underneath it to kind of keep me insulated and warm. And then what I do is Yeah, like that. And then you just add air in. There's a hose that goes to your tank, the same as like your BCD, protected by this air bubble. So you're not actually getting wet, which helps so much to keep you warm. I definitely recommend getting dry suit trained for these kind of waters because it just makes the dive just so much more enjoyable. Anyway, let's go diving. How's everyone feeling, guys? Woo! Yee! Yeehaw! It's gonna be one of the most incredible dives in your life. There it is. This is our dive site. For the entrance of Cathedral Cove, we've come to dive you. All right, we're gonna go. Ready? Cave diving is not for the faint hearted. It requires courage, skill, and a love for exploration. But those who dare to take the plunge will be rewarded with sights unlike anything else on Earth. Tasmania is home to the most underwater cave systems in Australia, many of which have yet to be explored, with twisting tunnels and ancient formations just begging to be discovered. We emerged out the system on the other side, where the darkness of the cave that we'd grown accustomed to turned back into the beckoning blue glow of the exit. Which quickly turned into the lush greenery of giant kelp forests. These forests are home to all kinds of critters and creatures, including this very friendly carpet shark, which swam right onto Nate's fin. Carpet sharks have the ability to move and contort their bodies in ways that would make even the most flexible gymnasts envious, twisting and turning to fit into tight spaces or to escape predators. This dive had everything we ever want as exploratory divers. Adventure, adrenaline, and amazing animal encounters. Thus far, the magnitude of life both above and below the water's edge in this temperate remote region of Australia was out of this world. And yet, we had only scratched the surface of the wildlife Tasmania is home to. Sailing towards our next anchorage, we decided to cruise the cliff line in search of a colony of New Zealand fur seals. It's literally freezing. Oh, we're searching and we're going through some spots that normally have seals and uh, yeah, they're, not, they're not there today. So we keep going along the coast and keep looking on the rocks and hopefully there's a couple somewhere. We haven't seen any on the rocks yet. Just when we thought it was time to give up, we received a sign we were headed in the right direction. See puppies! Yay! Oh, 
They're a common sight around Tasmania, with the cool waters and warm rocks providing the perfect habitat for them to bask in the sun and frolic in the ocean. On approach, you can't help but notice the excitement in their eyes as they leap off the rocks, splashing into the water and instantly gliding effortlessly through the waves to come and play. They might just be the most curious aquatic animals in the world. Seals are notoriously social creatures, and it's heartwarming to see them interact with one another, rolling and tumbling in the waves. The feeling of swimming with such playful, inquisitive creatures is like taking a dip in a pool of pure happiness. They also seem to enjoy coming up close, swimming in circles around us, and then quickly darting off faster than we can even turn our heads. The laughter and joy we feel when swimming with them is contagious. Sharing their environment with them is a privilege and it's one of the best experiences we've had in all our years in the ocean. How does it feel? It's amazing, they're so playful. It's so cool. <laughs> oh, best experience ever. After having been blessed with such fair winds for so many days, we were due for a bit of a shake-up again. As we began our journey further south, the wind picked up and we were forced to find somewhere to shelter and wait it out. Not too far away, we noticed an interesting mark on the chart. We weren't entirely sure what it was, but decided there was only one way to find out. As we approached the protected bay, surrounded by lush forest, it revealed itself. So it's a sea drag, and it is protected on the bay, so we want to try to park filthy a little behind the wreck. A little bit more. And we're going to drop only 12 meters, 12 meters, drop it down. Oh my goodness. It's closer than it looks, too. It's like 20 meters, if that, not even that, 15 meters off our stern. Ah! Settling in and ensuring we weren't going to swing too close to our new neighbor, it was time to do what we do best. There's a magic that we discovered underneath these clouds. There's a rhythm in every morning that we chase down. See 
We were astonished by the greenery of the forest surrounding us on the surface. That was nothing compared with the vibrancy of the kelp and algae that consumed every inch of this wreck. Navigating through its various passages and openings, we couldn't help but wonder how it had come to rest here, becoming the permanent home to little fish who occupy its many walls, including this stunning weedy sea dragon. But that's a story for another day. The thought of weeks of grid is what draws a lot of people towards the cruising lifestyle. For the most part in Tasmania, it's incredibly easy to avoid society and simply relish in the expansive natural wonders of the island. But every now and again, it's time to return to civilization. We have made it. In Tasmania, that means sailing into the beautifully historic city of Hobart, nestled against the backdrop of Mount Wellington. This place feels less like a city and more like a European town where the people are friendly and life is laid back. We pulled in just in time for the arrival of Australia's largest blue water sailing race, the Sydney to Hobart. Only a few weeks prior, we'd witnessed many of the boats practicing for this very race in Sydney Harbour. And now, we were parked alongside the finish line to celebrate in the festivities and cheer on the competitors as they reached the final leg of their race. So you're watching the Sydney to Hobart race and I think that's the winner right here and that's the, the finish line. <laughs> what we didn't initially know was the spot we chose to moor at happened to have a very special secret. Whenever you use a mooring, it's recommended to dive on it to ensure its strength and capability so that it doesn't snap. So whilst doing this, we decided to go for a cheeky muck dive. Apparently the water is free safe, um, yeah, let's give it a go. This kind of diving is where you explore silty bottoms in search of strange tiny creatures. And we were shocked at what we discovered. This happened to be the home of a fascinating creature called the spotted handfish. This unique anglerfish got its name for its hand-like fins, which it uses to walk along the ocean floor. Measuring less than six inches long and incredibly rare, this fish can't be found anywhere else. We felt so blessed to have come across this unique and strange looking creature and can't believe that something so weird and wonderful could be found right here beneath us. For the most part, we'd just about forgotten we were sailing in the Roaring Forties, but that was all about to change as we headed south to cross over to the west side. We're going to be coming across the bottom today. As you approach the southernmost tip of Tasmania, the once protected ocean waters quickly give way to the powerful winds and choppy seas which serve as a cautious reminder that there is nothing between you and the expansive stretch of wild ocean leading to the frozen world of Antarctica. Whoa. We're going dead downwind. Okay. What are we doing? What's, what's going on? We are in the southern point of Australia. That means that we are like super, 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 super far away from absolutely everyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All we have. Which way is Antarctica? Point. Which way is Antarctica? Antarctica is that way. Sailing below 40 degrees latitude is intimidating and daunting at times. The unpredictable nature of the sea this far south can make for a very dramatic and often treacherous sailing experience as you have to navigate through stormy waters and unpredictable weather patterns. But for those who take on the adventure, the reward can be truly exhilarating.
with the bottom of Tasmania looks like right there. Rugged, exactly what you thought it was. Rugged, like. yeah. Yeah, of course. to go all the way up the river, all the way into Bathurst Harbor. I never would have believed that we would be at the bottom of Tasmania swimming. We're doing pretty good. <laughs> that water's pretty freaking cold. Morning. It feels like we're like in a mountain lake. It's just gorgeous. What should we do today, crew? Explore. Okay. It's time. This isolated haven is a place where time seems to stand still, where the rhythm of life is dictated by the tides and the winds. Here, the land gives way to an endless stretch of wild and rugged coastline, punctuated by rocky cliffs, towering mountains, and sheltered coves. As our journey around Tasmania comes to an end, we can't help but feel blessed to still be able to explore places overflowing with truly wild and untamed beauty and have been humbled by its abundance. We dove through twisting tunnels, attempted to run away with a superpod, and encountered wildlife that we had never even heard of. But this journey has not been without its challenges. We faced moments of fear and uncertainty as we navigated through rugged terrain and unpredictable weather patterns. But in the face of adversity, we learned to rely on each other, to trust our instincts, and to embrace the unknown. We experienced one of the wildest places on Earth and emerged from it stronger, wiser, and more in awe of the natural world than ever before. As we leave Tasmania behind and set sail towards the horizon, we carry with us the memories of this incredible journey. And we leave this place grateful for all the amazing animal encounters that we were able to experience here. And as every person who's been to Tasmania before will say, we must make it here at least once, one day.